Apparently, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you don't just need superpowers to get your own movie, but a Y chromosome as well. Heck, even the Marvel movie girlfriends have been getting the short end of the stick, stuck in damsel in distress mode, particularly in Phase 2. While I love me some Tony Stark and Pepper Potts banter as much as the next fan, the Iron Man movies continue to give few reasons for why Pepper should stick around, with this latest film sinking to new lows that a sloppy last-minute girl power fix doesn't solve. Then for Thor The Dark World, it looks like scientist Jane Foster is getting reduced to playing the girl hostage, although that makes sense considering a reluctant to return Natalie Portman was basically held hostage by her contract. And who can forget how Captain America preferred to crash his plane into the Arctic than show up for date night with Peggy Carter? Couldn't he have just tied the lever to something and parachuted out? Plus, for Captain America the Winter Soldier, Peggy is left in the past literally, as Steve is said to hook up with her descendant, Sharon Carter. Talk about a Peter Pan complex. So far, Scarlett Johansson has been stuck holding the line all by herself as Black Widow. But despite doing an admirable job, she has yet to get her own spin-off film, and she's been asking. There's also Colby Smulders' Maria Hill, but her silver screen version is a far cry from the woman who runs S.H.I.E.L.D. in the comics. However, for Phase 2, Black Widow will be getting some company on the battlefield, as Jamie Alexander Sif has an expanded role in Thor The Dark World, and Zoe Saldana will bring alien assassin Gamora to life in Guardians of the Galaxy. There's also the rumor that the Scarlet Witch will be showing up in The Avengers 2, but her confusing power set makes it unlikely she'll be an audience favorite. Marvel's female characters taking a backseat on the silver screen is certainly an odd development, as the comics are famous for their strong female characters. However, most of them are X-Men, and that franchise is trapped over at Fox, likely forever. But as fans, male and female alike, wonder when their favorite superfems will get some time in the spotlight, Marvel Studios head honcho Kevin Feige has promised that he's thinking about it. He recently said it's about finding the right storyline, the right filmmaker, the right time. Hmm, sounds just like another empty Disney promise. But for fun, let's pretend he's legit. Which female superhero will get the first movie? It's an important choice as the film's success will determine if there will be any more female superhero films. The obvious choice is Black Widow, but Scarlett Johansson's spotty box office track record makes this a risky move. Then there's Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Miss Marvel, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, and I recently suggested that Elizabeth Banks would be a likable, affordable choice for the role. But her comic has never been a big seller, including the latest Captain Marvel incarnation. Plus, she flies and stuff, and that shit is expensive. Finally, Marvel's other best option is She-Hulk, but that's a double-edged sword. Thanks to Mark Ruffalo's performance, audiences are hungry for more Hulk, but might riot if they get a She-Hulk movie before a Ruffalo Hulk movie. Frankly, when you look at these options, it's more likely Marvel will get the rights back to the X-Men before they make an Avengers-based female superhero movie. What do you think? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.